What's going on, everybody? Welcome back We're for another Lord of the Rings traditional draft. I was just joking about how the reason we can't get Mythic every month is because we choose to play the format that they don't rank, which is weird. Why not rank traditional? Nobody knows. Unless there's an article about it somewhere that they wrote four years ago and never updated. <clears throat> I will just assume it's an arbitrary decision that they choose to... Uh, push people towards the premium draft premier draft or is it premium i think it's premier what makes it premier nobody knows just arbitrary arbitrary choices and arbitrary words chanel i would never spoil and if you guys haven't noticed i am posting um some up um uh, unboxing mail day kind of where i go through some some orders that i have some card orders and then we talk about the cards why i chose them what they're being used for what i think of them stuff like that would love if you guys check them out. I know it's not my usual game content, but all the comments have been very, very popular, have positive so far. So if you guys are willing to give those a chance, I would love it. Feel free to check out YouTube and subscribe or follow as well. It's a great way to support the channel. You can find the buttons right down there. And uh, yeah, let's uh, prepare for some for some traditional draft. Drafting traditionally. I watched them, really liked them. Neon Tokyo Rain, I appreciate you, buddy. All right, what do we got here? <clears throat> Shagrat Loot Bearer. Yeah, this is the equipment-based rare that does very little in normal limited. Each player sacrifices a creature. If you sacrifice a creature this way, you may return another permanent card from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's kind of interesting. Um, nothing in here that really jumps out. No great removal. I might just take Rise of the Witch King. Like, also being able to cycle something like this and then get it back with this on turn four, plus making them sacrifice a guy. All right, let's try Rise of the Witch King. I'm also a sucker for some some black-green. Sting is no Andoral, for sure. I do like Gollum, though. When he leaves the battlefield, ring tempts you. You can return him from your graveyard to your hand. I mean, it's plus one, plus one. Untap it. First, it just doesn't, like, I don't, this doesn't even feel rare, I'll be honest. Like, eh. Eh. Is it good enough? I don't know. Is it better than a, than a golem? Yeah, it's kind of good, I guess. The untap is like good for horse dip art, horse art dip. <laughs> See, that's funny. Now that's pod racing. All right, so we got this guy, this guy, this guy. I think it's the, I think it's the troll. Yeah, I mean for this for the direction we're going, the troll seems like the only real choice. We swamp cycle it, we get it back. We can sacrifice gall. Oh, another rise of the witch king. Man, this is just the Rise of the Witch King deck. I think we're taking a trebuchet. I, I'm a big fan of trebuchet. I also think we can get uh, a good amount of orcs and or goblins, so. Mm. It's sacrifice a creature, right? Yeah, okay, cool. Another troll. Peregrine took. Peregrine 
took is interesting because then every time our trebuchet makes a token, this also makes a food, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I think I like took better than second troll here. Oh, I like a Grimma Worm Tongue. I actually like Mortar and Muster even more, I think. It's just a great target for Rise. It works with Peregrine Took. It works with Trebuchet. Grimma Worm Tongue is just a human advisor. I'm just going to take this. <clears throat> oh, another troll? Sure. We're going to cycle these early, too. My turn one this, turn two muster, turn four rise of the witch king seems good. Also, if you guys want to support the channel, you can check out Factor. Factor is a sweet meal delivery service. They are the sponsor this month. I got an incredible kickback for every order, for every for every sub new subscriber. And you guys get 50% off your first box. So check them out. They, you can use the promo code that's in in the link on the channel <clears throat> it's in the channel box down below it's in the youtube description should be able to find it everywhere this is just another creature we can sacrifice grum's prioritizing small creatures just to get our our rises of the witch king going You know what? I don't hate having a Gal Galadrim bow. Yes, food is correct. It's the thing to do. Under the sea. None of these are great for us. I guess Pippin's bravery is fine. I mean, Pippin's Bravery could just win us the game. I think my favorite archetype in this format is the blue-green Scry deck. But I think it's hard to get because I think there's a lot of competition for it. Because it's very good. What do we got here? The ring goes south. Yep. This is the... Um, Lands equal to legendary creatures rare. Not super exciting. Haunt of the Dead Marshes. It's fine. I think Lash of the Balrog is probably what we want, especially if we're picking up tiny little creatures. I mean, there's literally... Also, the other options are like these three. Like, this is probably the only real... The only real pick here. Got a little Grand, the Gatebreaker. An Easterling Vanguard, which is also a great creature to sacrifice to Rise of the Witch King. <clears throat> I think it might be Grand here. It's just very good. It's just a 5-5. Five, five. Crew 3 is a little hard for us so far. I mean, I feel like if we have a creature that we want to Crew 3 with, we're probably just going to attack with that creature. Both of these are actually pretty good. I'm going to take the East. Mm, let's see what our curve looks like right now. More threes than twos. I'm going to take the Vanguard because of that. Oh, what up, Josh? Oh, another Grand. So, kind of get rewarded. And I think it's probably the better card in this pack. I guess Ents Fury is pretty good. Yeah, I think I'd rather have the Fight card. Oh, okay. Quick Beam Upstart Ent is actually very, very good. That's pretty cool. Just another nice fat guy for the for the rise. Claim the Precious. That's a that's a nice little. I was gonna take this bag end porter, but I'd much rather have the murder. The Torment of Golem. So this is just discard, make a two two. That's actually pretty good. 
I think we have enough trolls here. I'm gonna take the discard, make a two two. Do I just take the next one too? I mean, it's better than these two, right? So why not? I'll put it in the sideboard for now, but I could definitely consider playing it. Old Man Willow is very good. This feels rare to me, honestly. So on turn six, it's a six six, and then you can sacrifice another creature or a token, and then give something negative two, negative two, so you can just start picking things off. Like this deck seems very good. Uh, Shower of Arrows is relevant. We have a best of three, so can't have sideboard cards. None of these cards are that exciting. We have no five drops. I'll just take you. We have a Peregrine Took, so you're probably a little better. Mortal Knife Wound is definitely playable. Oh, what up, Nature's Little Treasure? Oh yeah, now we'll take this bag into Porter. And Wizard's Rockets. Ooh, what do we got here? Sauron the Necromancer, four, four, five. When it attacks, exile a creature from your graveyard, create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of that card, except it's a 3 3. At the beginning of your M sip, exile it unless Soren is your ring bearer. That's hard to do, but I'm pretty sure that's still probably the pick. Yeah, I don't think Arena's gross. I just. I mean, it's fine. I don't know. Unfortunately, you're not a fan, but I think it's still a fine alternative to playing Magic. Um, yeah, I think we're just taking the Soren. <laughs> Uh, another claim the precious. That's pretty decent. I think Lothlorien Lookout's probably still good, even if we're not scrying. I think claim the precious is going to be better, but bitter downfall. Spell cost. Three less if the target's creature does self damage. Destroy a creature, its controller loses two life. I mean, that's just good, even at four. We're gonna have a, we have a lot of removal so far. I haven't seen any of the six mana ends that cycle. This was the one that fully overloaded me. Too many new cards my brain couldn't handle. I totally understand. I totally feel that. That is a. Uh, I mean, there's still a Haunt of the Dead here. I think it's fine. I mean, it's actually going to be the pick here. Um, it's usually pretty easy to get at least one Haunt of the Dead Marshes, though. Uh, another Mordor Trebuchet, which I don't know how good it is currently. I think I'll kind of just want this Limbus. Target player loses a life. The Sacrifice Creature is legendary. Like, the Ring Tempting Us is doing a lot of heavy lifting here. Six seconds. All right, yeah, it's fine. I'll just take. I'll just take Grimmel Worm Tongue. Uh, oh, here's a generous end. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. Lothlorien Lookout actually seems great here. Just padding out our two mana spot. Uh, don't really care about you. I guess I'll take the envelope. It gives us. It makes it helps the ring tempt us. <sighs> Spider, sure. Hey, look, it's old Butterbur. <laughs> uh, this is another late Lothlorian lookout. Those guys are surprisingly good. Makes me wonder if anyone is in the actual scry archetype. Mm, none of these are super exciting. 
take the Pippin's Bravery. I'm not even sure I'll play the first. Oh, I've definitely seen the Scry deck played successfully. I mean, typically it involves that... Uh, I mean, if you can go Lothlorian Lookout into the 3-2 that gets a counter every time you Scry, it's very, very effective. Chance Met Elves. Um... They've also had the, the two-mana Arwen that puts a counter on something every time you scry. I am still looking for work. It is exhausting. I have a talk with another interviewer tomorrow. I, It's not a position I think I'm going to get. Um, and then I applied for <laughs> another position at a random company, and it was for an associate game designer position, and they're like, we've gone with another candidate. And I was like, dude, I have three years of game design experience recently, and... I can't even get this associate position. I'm like associate is actually below me at this point. When you have three to five years of game design experience, you're pretty much considered a senior game designer, but apparently it's just really, I mean, I'm, I'm wondering, I'm actually wondering if it's based on the amount I put for desired salary. Like if I'm just like, if I just leave that negotiable and I'll get more, um, more hits, like, yeah, this doesn't look like a great trebuchet deck. I also don't think we care about Lash here. You both are good. Pippin's Bravery I don't think I care about, but we'll see if we need to cut it. I like everything here. I'm not sure this is even a Peregrine Took deck. I don't think it's a Grimma Worm Tongue deck for sure. Um, eh, Grim is actually fine. Uh, we will take out Trebuchet. I don't think we have enough of mass or orcs or goblins. I think it's more red black card. <sighs> like Peregrine, to how many tokens are we making? What cards make tokens here? Literal, like one, two, three. Sauron 4. Uh, we definitely want Mortar Muster. Like, our, our game plan is Rise of the Witch King. Like, we're definitely not taking out any creatures that cost, two, like, less than 4. Like, we want to be able to sack creatures. Our, our goal is to cycle these guys and then sacrifice them to Rise of the Witch King. And I think Sting gives us some decent uh, late game potential. I mean, I'd much rather take out, like... Uh, I mean, Glad Gladio Bow might be better than Sting, but we have two cuts. Hmm. I can see cutting Pippin's bravery. I just don't really care about it that much. I could see cutting Sting since we do have the bow. I was actually thinking of six. 16 lands could be decent, actually, just because we do have three land cyclers here. I actually don't hate that. This does give haste as well, which is kind of good. Interesting. I wonder if I do just want one Pippin's Bravery. Um, I mean, the lookouts aren't... I mean, the lookouts are still 1-3s that scry, which is very, very good. And, again, we're trying to sacrifice to Rise of the Witch King. We want a creature on turn 2 or 3 to sacrifice to this to get back one of these guys. Like, that's the goal. Josh, I'm, I, I literally just explained what they do twice. <laughs> just like... Oh. I think I will go to 16 lands. Let's see if this works. And I'm going to cut Sting for one Pippin's Bravery. How many creatures is this? Just to make sure I'm not 14. That's actually a good amount. All right. Let's see if we can do it. Yeah, I mean, like, obviously a 1-3 three for 3 without any very good synergies. Or 1-3 for 2 
without any great synergies in your deck is not ideal. But I mean, the point is like we want we want creatures to be able to sacrifice to Rise of the Witch King to bring back like a six five on turn four. Oh, look at that. That's actually not bad. Any any like two drop in were actually pretty good. <laughs> it's your boy. Oh, it's little little bagginsies. Frodo's really confusing. He's like, he must be blocked. He can't be blocked. All right, I guess we're blocking. Are you gonna pump it and kill my guy? Sure. You got it. You got it. Look, another Lothlorien lookout. My goodness. This time we won't keep it because we have all the mana that we need to, be able to play like Bag and Porter, so. Yep, got a block. Uh, so, like, that's funny. Um, it's an interesting question, like, what, what game you designed recently? Like, that's not... Um, like, I was working at a company called Scopely, which is a pretty big mobile company. We were working on an unannounced AAA MMORPG. Um, unfortunately, our project got canceled at the very beginning of the year, and our whole team was laid off, so... But yeah, it's hard to answer because it's like not usually like when you're a game designer, it's not like I designed this game. You know what I mean? Like you're just working on a team designing games. So it's like. So I can't block him. That's good. That's great. This is, this is so many, like there's so many things going on here. Whenever Ring tempts you, if you choose a creature other than the Aragorn, which they did, put a, ch put a choice, your choice of, what did they put? They put Death Touch, but I can't block your guy, so that's fascinating. Um, get in there. Mm, that's fine, I guess. Uh, no, I've never had an interview where someone's asking what you've been programming and languages you're from. Like, you're going to know that before you apply for the role. And and game design is not all programming. You're thinking of game, you're thinking of developers and you're thinking of systems designers. Like, that's not exactly the same as game design. I think we're just passing here. Because we can't really do anything else. I would love removal for this one Frodo that's been giving us fits when they have three lands. <laughs> Yeah, so like for me, my for my my game design expertise, I was on the character and combat team. So we were designing characters, we were designing combat abilities, we were designing heroes, NPCs, things like that. And then we would work them up in Unity. We would paper prototype them, we'd work them up in Unity. We were designing encounters. So like, oh good, one green. One green, which means we can't do anything here. <laughs> That's sad, isn't it? Okie dokie. We don't really have any loot effects currently, so I'm just going to play the land.
quality. Fantastic. This is going very well, I think. So, I'm at 8. We're just going to go to the next game, because drawing a second forest or creatures that, that cost less than 6 is just not uh, not in the cards for us today. I actually think this spider might be better than the haunt. Like, our odds of bringing back haunt is just kind of low, whereas like having a spider that can kill anything seems much better like if that spider if that haunt was a spider instead like frodo would have been dead five turns ago so yeah once they tempt the ring for the fourth time it's like i'm out pressing qq will tap all your non-creatures that add mana and float it until you use it or proceed to the next step or phase. That's an interesting... What does that do? Why? I don't even understand the use of that. Isn't that just the same as auto-tapping? Play first. Um, two trolls. Yeah, this is actually... To count mana for X is interesting. Okay, that makes that's actually pretty good. Pass. Give me a little, give Papa a little cycle. So we're going to do that thing again where we don't draw any, uh, We draw the one for us. But you have a generous ent in hand. Ooh. Let's draw our combo piece next turn. Oh, we did not do it, but that was close. It's still pretty good, I guess. Oh man, let's attack with Old Man Willow. Draw uh, Rise of the Thing and then kill a creature. Kill two creatures. Let's kill all the creatures. Totally fine. Get that. Fantastic. I'm sorry, wait, what? Oh, because you had a food. Fantastic. I knew it wasn't going to survive more than one turn because that would be too good, I think. We're not gonna we're not gonna loot here. If we hit a land, and by loot I mean cycle, if we hit a land, then we get to play our six drops. If we don't hit a land, we, we hit something that costs less than six, so. Sure. I really not turn creatures but don't care food. Sure. Like even though I've read these cards like ten times each. It's still, I still have to reread them to be like, okay, hold on, this has seven lines of text. I may have forgotten what they are. Hmm. 
Who's gonna who's gonna bear the ring? Probably actually we'll make it this guy, because then if we play Worm Tongue, we can actually sacrifice it to make a bigger orc. Yeah, I'm just like, okay, what are the four lines of text on you? I know you're food based, but what exactly do you do? You got it. Oh, I'll make two foods. Sure. <laughs> All right. Five, seven, or six, five? Probably six, five, right? Man, if they had, like, Reprieve right there, I would have been really sad. Dude, I agree. I'm like, why do I have to hear this dog getting sad every single time? <laughs> like, dog whimpering should be a triggering noise. Ooh. You have no cards in hand? Well, that's worse then. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sure. No blocks. You don't want to trade your whole board for this guy? Give me those two foods. This is sacrifice another creature. Okay, just making sure. Some there's so many cards that are like sacrifice a creature, and then there's so many cards that are sacrifice a creature or token. It's like, well, that's. Well, that's a big dude. Yeah, I think they're just gonna sack a bunch of tokens to this mushroom watchdogs for now. Oh, interesting. Seems good. Yep. Yep. One more? No? Maybe. Okay. So the question is, they could they could block with all three of these, and then we're trading with one, but then they still have this to deal with. Yeah, this feels fine. If we had if we had Piffin, Pippin's bravery here, that'd be very good. That'd be a blowout. Oh. Interesting. This is not the block I was expecting. They also have no cards, which is good. Okay. So, you're blocking... So they all die, right? Three, four, five, six? Sure, but we'll... Um, what 
the beginning of your end step, whenever the ring tempts you, if you choose a creature, I'm just gonna leave the Faramir, it's just easier for us to deal with. Mm, that was a four for two, and not terrible. I'm tempted to make a two two here, but I don't think that's, like, what are the odds they're ever gonna have a card in their hand again? Yeah, that just feels better, I think. <laughs> okay. Oh, solid top deck. Uh, can you even attack here? Like, if you miss, then you're just dead on the crackback, almost. 1-1 one, one counter target creature you control its power is 4 greater. That creature gets plus 1, plus 1, and then fights. So... I guess we all have good top decks. We all have good top decks down here, Georgie. Yeah, I think our deck is good. Feels good. Uh, let's keep this hand. Any hand where we can cycle a guy and have at least two lands. Like, this guy into these guys. Into this is pretty good. Then the ring can tempt this guy. And they went to six. On the, on the play? Oh, man. How do we lose? Very easily, I'm sure. Same, buddy. Same. You got it. You got it. I don't I think I actually forgot to put the um the four mana reanimates in. Yeah, I don't think they're in here. Isn't that weird? I could have sworn I put him in, but I guess I, I think I just made a mistake. Yeah, they're just not in here. That's weird. What a what a weird what a weird thing. Double block here? Would they do that? This is an instant. You can stay back. Nope. Oh, that was a good scry. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful scry. Five mana is the kind of kind of the sweet spot, because if you draw the sixth land, you can probably play your six drops. And if you don't draw the sixth land, you're drawing something you can cast because six mana is our our top out. Um, I think we're playing the land for that reason and then just playing other spider. And now we can keep up bitter downfall. This guy's fine. We have no tokens. I feel like we're in very good shape here. Especially if we can draw land for this quick beam upstart. And look at that, we did. Never never a problem drawing lands here. Uh, 
Uh, target legendary creature gains death strike. Death, death touch. Death strike. Do I care about growing worm tongue? Not really. I'd much rather have some of the better cards in our deck. Sure. Okay, that was that one for one. Sure. Yep, this is all fine. Oh my god, come on, dude. Wonderful. Their engine's getting started. Not much they can do with it, though. I like that the scry is first. Oh, that's actually really good here. Yeah, we're going to keep that and use it. Choose an opponent. You know there's only one, right? Sure. That was a decent hit. Do you consider yourself more of a Hulk fan than a Punisher fan? I also have... Um, that's funny that you say that. Because <laughs> I also have the Punisher first appearance over here, which you can see once we get out of this, this view. Um... But I also have a Punisher statue behind me as well. See, like, I have a bunch of statues, though, but I don't consider myself a bigger fan of one than the other. You know what I mean? Like, I have a whole magic collection, but that doesn't mean I'm a bigger fan of one card over another. I just like... I like comics, you know? Um, none of my attacks are great. I don't want them to take... I guess I'm just... now. Nah, we're gonna have to do a little... Give me, the, give me the, the, the combo piece once. Thank you. Good gravy. Um, yes. Our hand is very good. What do we have in here? I just want to make sure we're doing things correctly. Um, I might actually wait until next turn to get Quick Beam Upstart back. And I might just play Soar on this turn. That feels correct. Sauron's also a better mana value, so. I mean, I'm fine with them sacking Peregrine Took. Like, that seems totally fine. Oh, you mean Took Reaper. Yeah, yeah, that makes... <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, they're going to do that anyway. But I, I was... Um, kind of thinking of just attacking with these guys. You know what? Everybody's getting in. This is... Every, everything's happening here. Um... Let's get you, one for you, and one for you. Then we get the scry, keep that. Then we get the loot, pitch that. There's a lot going on here. Put you in the front. I mean, I am tempted to kill one of these to keep Sauron alive. I 
So we take three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're taking eight. They're not actually. Let's sacrifice the troll, because he dies anyway, right? It doesn't say that, but I'm pretty sure this puts a delayed trigger on the stack. I think we have to, I think we're sacking this. I don't think, just because it doesn't say it, I'm not gonna assume that it. They're at 17 though, which is not nothing. Can you explain a delayed trigger? Um, a delayed trigger means it's part of the ability. So this whole ability goes onto the stack. Whenever Sauron the Necromancer attacks, exile a creature from your graveyard, create the tapped creature. At the beginning of the next end step, exile that token unless Sauron is your ring bearer. Because that's part of the effect that already went on the stack, it's a delayed trigger. It's gonna trigger. If it was a separate ability, Th then like it wouldn't trigger because Soren is no longer on the board for that ability to trigger. That that means that ability would trigger on its own when the conditions are met, but it wouldn't see that at the time it's supposed to trigger, if that makes sense. But since it's all part of this one ability, that one ability did go on the stack. Uh, you. And you. These spiders are doing some work, man. Uh, pump you. And pump you. Um, you can go on the bottom. Okay. That's pretty good. Yeah, this game feels quite, quite over. I don't even think I play Old Man Willow, because if they have, like, did they use Battle of the... Yep, they already used Battle of Bywater. But I just don't think we need it, so... Is that another Butterbur? Jeez. Their deck is pretty good. I could just kill it. We're just gonna kill it. And they lose too, so it's like, I'm not going to slow roll the, the thing. My judge sense had me typing an explanation as well, but you explained it. Glad to hear it. I need to know more about that then too. <laughs> Show the thing. Okay, yeah, so so there's the Hulk here, but behind me there's also a Punisher right here. And there's a Spider-Man and a Green Goblin. You just can't see them. And the spider the first appearance of Punisher is right here. So Yeah, I wouldn't say I'm more of a, a Hulk fan. I'm definitely a bigger Punisher fan. But that Hulk statue by XM Studios is actually insane. I should have actually switched this guy out. Um, this is a decent amount of scry in the first. Uh, you're good, but I don't think I can have you this early. I'm sorry. I'm looking for Rise of the Mucklux. Is that what it's called? Oh, I see. Katie actually hates the Green Goblin. She thinks he's very scary. <laughs> She's not a big Willem Dafoe fan. Aw. 
Another forest, huh? I don't need a fifth land right now. Hmm, boy. Oh, well, that's neat. Um, that's interesting. I'm going to bottom it for now. Like, it means we have nothing. Like, we have two things we can play between now and then. I'd much rather have, like, something good. What does this do? Oh, it's a shortcut to mushrooms. Got it. Wild. Hmm. I still don't really want it. Because <laughs> we're going to draw enough lands naturally. Uh, I'll decline. Negative two, negative two on your Shire Scarecrow doesn't really have this, the effect I want it to. This one I might keep because I'm just getting to a point where like I'm going to run out of lands, but I, I didn't anyway. Because we have such a good hand right now that like... We can deal with a lot of the cards that they play. Okay. Oof. See, now we can keep any land. Do I even want to get in there with him? You block there, but you take four, five, six. Eh, that's actually fine. Because then we can just play him again. Uh, we'll keep that as well. Or do I want to sacrifice something? No, I don't think so. Maybe I sacrifice this guy to kill something. Actually, yes, because we're not going to play anything else. Mitch, good to see you, buddy. Oh, a little trebuchet. And a spider. Okay. Haunt, haunt into Old Man Willow is quite the combo. Uh, sure. That's really strange that you have that and I have Haunt of the Dead Marshes here. This kind of shuts down our entire strategy, which is kind of obnoxious. And they have no cards in hand. So, wow, that worked out really well. <laughs> oh, boy. It's powers four is greater. So, this becomes a 6-6 six, six and we can kill this. But is it fight? Uh, yeah, they're fighting. So, that's not great. Hmm. 
Yeah, you know what? Now we're keeping the land. Sacrifice you. Kill you. And do we want to kill something else as well? Great question. No one asked it, but it's still a great question. I think we're just getting tired of this, and I just want to kill it. Like, Trebuchet is much less important at this point. They have no cards in hand, so... I feel like this Old Man Willow is really just... They also can't get their... It's it, This is any creature, right? If a creature and opponent controls a die... Oh, no, this went to their hand. Because I'm always like, why didn't it go to the graveyard? Oh, it's over here. I really don't like that. I like it when it does it to your side, because then you can see it. But for the opponent, like, I kind of want to know that this is not in your hand, and this is in your graveyard. Like, I almost just cast this thinking like, oh, well, I can get rid of your card. But I can't. So they have to block here, right? Okay. <laughs> uh, spider. Haunt was really good that game, though. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I like that all of these cards say new. <laughs> They're new to your deck. Uh, what does that mean? Nobody knows. I think we'll just keep it like this. I don't think we're poorly positioned here, so. Um, yeah, I like this. Any one six mana cycler is great here. choice frank later let's hear your kayak story oh my god this is actually a great format to tell the kayak story so like two weeks ago katie and michael and i went to horse tooth reservoir i have a kayak katie has a paddleboard michael has nothing so we have like this sizable inner tube that me and katie and katie's brother and sister-in-law went down the why why what am i what's sure i'll i'll, I'll bite um, and if you want to kill this guy with a removal spell just so I can get a 1-1 instead, that's fine. So we went down the, the river in Montana. We were visiting them in Montana a while back in like the summer and there was a river and we went down it with like big tubes and it was super fun. Um, I'm not going to pay the two, uh, for obvious reasons. And that's not as good. Wait, what? Does this exile it? I mean, exile this creature. Okay, so that's a thing. Doesn't do anything on the board, though. So, Michael has an inner tube. We're like, we'll bring the inner tube for you just so you have something to do. Horse Tooth Reservoir is humongous. It's like six miles long. Um, 
And so the current was going from here to here. It was going this way. We parked and got out and got into the water. We boarded here, right? So we were going this way towards, away from, against the current, we'll say. Um, so Michael ties his, his inner tube to my kayak. And I'm like, this is not going to work. I cannot... This this isn't how kayaks work. Like, there's no way I'm gonna be able to uh, to pull you. <laughs> like, it's just not a thing. And he's like, sure, sure, you'll be fine. That's you know, it's that's that's the way it works. And I'm like, no, no, that's not how water works. Like, the kayak doesn't have. I don't have the arm strength to pull like an extra 400 pounds. You know, that's, that's just not how it works. That's just not how water works. Um, like he thought the water would do all the work. I guess I don't know, but. So I'm, I'm pulling him and I'm like, this isn't working. So I, I, I let him go and then he ties himself to Katie's paddleboard to see if that works instead. Um, as you can imagine, it doesn't work much better. I don't have any creatures, but I guess I would have kept that guy alive had I known that they were gonna make me discard this and then I was gonna be able to cast this. Hmm, unfortunate. I think we're just passing here. So, I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. Hold on. Um, so yeah, it ties us to Katie. Katie also can't can't do it. Like no, no, no one's capable of like just pulling another human being like against the current, like with just a paddle. Like it's just not a thing you can do. Um, so there's this side little area. There's like a a, a little a little inlet here, a little on enclave area, and we pull into that. Like we 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 paddle into it, and we're like, let's pull off here. Michael can get out. So wait, actually, um, addendum. When we're going, the way we're going, we're going towards the, the the flow, the current. On our way back, we're going against it. So it was like impossible to pull back to shore against the current with Michael uh, tied onto us. So we end up being like, we can't, like Katie was literally paddling for like 15 minutes and getting nowhere, like literally nowhere, just not moving because like it was just balancing out. The, the current's going this way, she's pulling this way and it's like just, you're staying in one spot, especially because you have someone tied to you. It's like, it's like just dead weight, right? And so we end up going into this little inlet and we untie Michael's inner tube when we let him loose and we're like, hey, just climb up these rocks and wait for us <laughs> and we'll come up with the car and we'll come get you because we can't we literally are physically incapable of getting back to the area where the car is when we're pulling you like it's just not a thing um so we do that and then we still it still takes us like literally 20 minutes to paddle back against the against the current i just don't think this is correct right now i just wish i had one creature um, so we do that. We come all the way back and then we see Michael like standing up on this like hill, which is like literally like half a mile from where we dropped him off. Cause I think we're, like we dropped him off here. It took us 20 minutes to paddle back. And then like the car is over here and he's like probably right around here. Like he climbed up the hill with no shoes on. And we were like, Hey, we'll come back and we'll bring your shoes. So you don't have to like climb up these rocks, like by yourself with bare foot, bare feet. And so <laughs> we see him. And it was just like, it was just like the most, every part of this experience was like super exhausting and draining because we were just like, we did not anticipate the difficulty of carrying another person. And like, we just thought it would be fun. Like we would just like, he would be on his thing. We would be on our things. We would just be in the water having a good time. But the currents like made it so that like, we had to constantly be moving. That's actually a really good hit. And it was just like, we were all exhausted at the end. We were all like, this was not, like Michael needs his own like device. I should have attacked first. That was that was my bad. 
I'm telling the story though, so. So yeah, that was the first time I took this new kayak out. The new kayak was fantastic. I had the dogs on it with me. I had Wally and Watson on there. They were having a great time. Um, but yeah, I mean, I had a great time. We got a little sunburnt. But we definitely learned a lesson. The lesson is like, don't, don't try to 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 pull a three hundred and something pound human being behind a kayak, because it's just not, it's not going to work for you. Like it's so funny because he was like, "That's just, it'll it'll be fine. That's how water works." And I'm like, "No, it's definitely not how water works." Like I guess he thought it'd be like the water would do the work and like he would be light enough that I would just, I would just pull it and it'd be totally fine. And like, it would almost feel like, like no weight at all. But I'm like, I don't, that's not how that works. Like, that's why when you tie a cement brick to yourself, you sink because <laughs> the weight is definitely real. All right, this game is out. This game is over. Our deck seems very good. If he was in a canoe or another kayak, you would have been able to pull him much. Right, if it was something uh, with less resistance, perhaps. Right, yeah. I think there, I mean, there'd still be weight to it, though. Like, I think it would still take a, con it would, it would go easier, but the, 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 the effort it would need to actually pull, like to actually like, to actually move forward, I think would be a, a lot higher. It's like, it's like resistance on a bike. You know what I mean? Like if you go on the higher settings on a bike, like, like it definitely works. You can do it, but there's going to be more resistance and like, you're going to have to push off harder, so to speak. Yeah, going against the current on the way there would have been a good idea. That's interesting. I wonder why we didn't do that. I mean, obviously our plan, like we didn't really account for those things, so. Uh, this hand seems good, sure. Uh, it's a reservoir. It's it's called Horse Tooth Reservoir, Stuart, if you want to check it out. It's very sweet. It's super, it's it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. But it's like, it's, it's like a mile wide, but like six miles long. Next time you come, we can give you an inner tube and you can come with us and we can pull you on it. You know, like you do. Literally killed this thing on sight. Um, is that good enough to keep here? Probably, yeah. If only rivers could go downhill both ways. Yeah, if only if only the river was an MC Escher painting, then you'd be totally fine. Next time we can play both these guys. Beautiful. We can scry first too. Man, what a what a time to be alive. What do you guess they get a third color? Like, you're not waiting on me, right? I'm like, wait, is it me? How long does it take to get a basic land? Two 
today, Junior? Swamp. Look at that. Third land. Beautiful. They're debating between the third third color and the second blue. It feel, sure feels like they were. Uh, Swamp can go on the bottom. Oh, this is great because we get to cycle this, put our fifth land down, cast Rise of the Witch King. Dude, there's been motion at our door all day. And I'm pretty sure it's been... Oh, that's so good. Wow. Oh, I'm real excited now. This is... This is gasoline. Bottom. Mm, top. <laughs> that feels good. Um, you know, we're just attacking. Bottom. Bottom. Keep you in business. Sure. End the turn. So they're at seven, huh? Okie dokie. Rise of the Witch King, huh? Doing some work this game. Six mana, huh? Seven mana, huh? What's it gonna be? Oh. He did. That was a that was a good show, jolly good show. Uh, this seems like a match where we kind of want the other spider. Everything else seems fine. Arctic seems good. I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm crazy. We got our little ring motion cam here. I'm like, where's why is all this motion happening? And there's like nothing going on. We do have a bird feeder on our on our porch. That sometimes triggers it because the birds are like, hey, what up? Man, I love birds. I'm not crazy. I'm just a little unwell. I know right now you can't tell. But stay a while. Maybe then you'll see a different side of me. Oh, also, I got some... I got some sweet YouTube lighting so I can be a cool YouTuber like the big kids. You ready? Did it go on? It didn't go on. That's a bad sign. It's awkward. Did it break already? I wonder if it broke. <laughs> Sorry, you get one day use. That's weird. Oh well. Still waiting on these these fine gentlemen. Not working as a Twitch move, not a YouTube move. Mr. Beast never got back to me. <laughs> okay, you tagged him there. <laughs> oh, actually, I think it was an unintentional tag. I think it was supposed to be a link, but then it was really uh, it wasn't. It was not a link. I'll keep this hand. It's a little slow, but it, it gets the job done. Actually, I have remotes too, but I bet they have the thing in them. Yeah, they have that little plastic piece that you have to remove in order to activate the battery. To force the connection. My YouTube lights live in Canada. You know, They don't go to this school. Yeah, that's true. 
He's not wrong. Walter, you're not wrong. You're just an asshole. Move a counter of each kind not on Goldberry River Daughter from another target permanent onto Goldberry. Move a counter of each kind. So I can move a loyalty counter? And then move one or more counters from Goldberry onto another permanent you control. I don't get it. <laughs> Non-boomer magic is hard, man. Do I cycle this guy? That's the question. I have five lands. I don't think so. Just go to blank asked. I don't know what you I don't know what got blanked there. <laughs> Reading the card does not really explain the card as much these days. Alright, Goldberry. Like, it's weird when they lead with Swamp Island because we know they have, and they miss a land drop when we know they have three color cards in their deck. And by three color, I mean triple green. And now we get to cast something cool. Let's see what your ridiculous hand is that you can't cast anything from Delighted Halfling. Oh, Bully Biscuits. Gain control of up to one target. You, did, you missed the land drop again, huh? So I think I'm just taking this guy. Your hand is pretty cool. But stay a while, maybe then you'll see. Did they miss another? Oh, they hit it. So now they can play their their, their saga. Are they not going to play the saga? They have to play the saga. You didn't play the saga. Are you really going to wait until I have an artifact you can steal? Because that's not a thing that exists. You know your whole hand, you can't do anything, so we'll just play this guy, play a land, play a spider. And next turn we have six drop into six drop into Pippin's Bravery. Big Pippin's, check it and see. So now you're going to play it. That's weird. See, now my guys aren't tapped. And now you're turns away from drawing those extra cards that you needed. I don't understand. Gotti. <sighs> Get stunned. You think they got any think they got any forests in their deck? I guess they do. I guess they do. Also, as an unemployed individual, I did add the I added back the uh, the little rent donation counter in case you guys are curious or interested in donating and knowing where your donations go or how close we are or what have you. Um This guy. Can I do it twice? I cannot. I can literally seven them right now. That's kind of cool. And then every creature on board is lethal almost. What does this guy do? Anything I care about? Not really. I'm tempted to just seven them here. I guess I guess I can just seven them next turn as well, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, 
But if you guys were considering ever donating, a better option is to check out Factor. Factor is a meal delivery service. They're owned by HelloFresh and they have ready to eat meals. You don't actually have to cook them. So it saves that kind of like legwork from, from HelloFresh. If you don't want to come home from work and be like, oh, I have to spend 45 minutes making this meal now. It's literally, they come really, really fresh. They're refrigerated, never frozen. Um, and you get 50% off your first box with the code in the chat. So check that out. Plus, for every new subscriber, I get a sweet kickback, like an, an exorbitant, a ridiculous kickback. So it's a great sponsor. It's a great way to, to try a new meal delivery service. And it's a great way to get something for, for your money. So it's not just like free. Fascinating. Do they pay you as well? Yes, they do actually. Um, I was actually surprised at the, the kickback I got from each subscriber. Like in most situations, I think the kickback they give me for the, from the sponsorship is actually more than what you guys would pay for the meals. So it's kind of ridiculous. Why didn't I play the spider? I wanted to keep up Pippin's bravery and then I just got overwhelmed. I was like, you know what? This, this is too much. I'm too far ahead. I don't want to overwhelm my opponent. Yeah, that's the thing, right? Like, if they based it off of one box, that makes sense. They're literally... Yeah, so it's per... It's, it has to be a new subscriber, and your first box you get 50% off of. But again, it's like HelloFresh, where you can cancel after the first box if you want. So it's no commitment. But I think they're they're literally banking on people getting... Staying subscribed. Like, that's, that's what they're going for. They want that repeat customer, so... So in the end, it's worth it for them. Yep. Yep. And you're tapped out. Did we lose a game this 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 draft? This draft was went very well. Also, disclaimer: I've every time we've gotten HelloFresh, Michael's gotten it a ton. Uh, every time Katie and I have gotten it, we've loved it. So. Let's claim our reward. Beautiful. Use 20 in play points to enter a qualifier play-in event. What does play-in mean? Like I'm playing in the event? Is that what that's is that what that means? I don't know. Should we open these these nine packs? Sure, why not? Because there's nothing else to do with them. If only I could use these to draft. Mythic, mythic. On the wall. Ooh, look at this. Look at this beautiful baby boy. You're playing, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's what it feels like. Thank you guys for watching. Slam those like and subscribe buttons. If you're watching on the YouTube, be sure to check out the other content. Make sure to check out those mail videos that I've been doing. Really, really been enjoying making them. So I hope you guys have been enjoying watching them. And I'm hoping they get a little more traction. So definitely check those out. I'll see you guys next time.